To heal your metabolism literally means to heal your life force. It's so much more than your body's ability to digest and break down food. Your metabolism is the bodily processes that require you to sustain all of life and believe it or not it has more of a function than just how quickly you gain weight or lose weight your metabolism is your life force and it is your ability to assimilate nutrients to break down food to lose weight to gain weight but it's also all of the tiny little chemical processes that go on for you to walk breathe grow hair go to the gym work out sleep think go to the bathroom sweat detoxify and oh, so much more your metabolism goes all the way down to the small smallest cell, the smallest particle, the smallest ion. And it's a symphony of molecules working together to create thousands and thousands of chemical reactions. Your metabolism is your life force. If your metabolism is slow, your life force is slow. Your fire is slow. Your passion is slow. Your mood is dimmed. Your light isn't shining. And not only could you be holding on to weight, but probably a lot of emotions too. When there's no passion for life, your body protects itself and slows down, trying to protect you from breaking out of the very cycle that's hurting you in the first place. But in order to be you, to look like you, to feel like you, to live the life that you really want, you need to break out of the cycle. Stop shrinking, stop restricting, Stop eating small, stop playing small, stop working out small. Healing your metabolism is so much more than just what you put into your body. What are you feeding your mind to? Let's start with the physical stuff. You need to be eating enough. And I'm not talking you're kind of eating enough, intentionally restricting your calories, but still kind of eating enough. I'm talking never go to bed hungry eating enough. Wake up and eat immediately kind of eating enough. Never feeling hangry again eating enough. As a woman, I spent my whole entire life thinking that less food is more. It was low carb this and low fat that. Eat 1500 calories a day. Fruit is bad. Don't eat past 7 p.m. And for the love of God, fast for at least 16 hours a day. The moment that I threw all of these idealist expectations of how we should eat and fuel ourselves and live our lives out the window was the moment that my body actually started responding. It was the moment that my body started to feel free again. It started to feel nourished and protected and loved and accepted. So I threw all those rules out the window and I created a few of my own. So physically, when it does come to the food, here are some things that I did. I always ate within an hour upon waking. I ate point eight to one gram of protein per pound in body weight. I ate carbs, I ate fat, and I focused on balancing all of my meals with all of the macronutrients, protein, fat, and carbs at every single meal with no restrictions. I focused on real whole foods, but it's okay if you're not there yet, don't sweat it, you will be. I never went to bed hungry, and I ate before and after my workouts to make sure that I had enough fuel in the tank to fuel my workouts and recover from my workouts. And if I was hungry, I just didn't question it. I ate something. Personally, I tracked macros and I did this for about eight to nine months and I still do it off and on because I am a numbers person and I'm in a place with my relationship with food where I didn't really need to obsess over it. It didn't become a weird obsession or trigger any potential eating disorder things for me. It was more a measurement of the energy that I was putting into my body. And I realized a lot during that process. I realized that I had been under fueling. I had been unconsciously restricting. I realized that I actually needed 130 to 140 grams of protein to recover from my strength training sessions. I actually realized that I needed over 200 grams of carbs a day to recover from my strength training sessions and give me that mental and physical boost of energy that I was lacking for so long. I also realized that while fat is good and fat is amazing, fat is not my body's optimal macronutrient no matter what the keto and carnivore people say. My metabolism transformed when I started to come back to balance. I realized that I've been limiting my body's true potential because I was scared of gaining a couple extra pounds that my body desperately needed. Next, I started incorporating resistance training and slow movement. I haven't actually been the most athletically inclined kid for the most of my life. I was involved in sports, but quit after every year or so. I was in gymnastics, but broke my arm twice. I was in dance, but never really the star of the team. I'm a terrible runner, my hips are janky, and overall, my rhythm is just a little bit awkward. But I love to move my body, and I love to work out. I started going to the gym when I was 16 years old, my summer of junior year. I would run for like 
30 minutes on the treadmill and then do 15 to 20 minutes of ab circuits. And at the age of 16, I saw results and I started getting addicted to the feeling of getting smaller. But cardio is really not how you rev your metabolism and keep your metabolism strong and burning in the long haul. Resistance training is. Resistance training helps you put on more muscle. And the more muscle that you have, the more energy your body naturally expends throughout the day because it requires a lot of energy to maintain higher amounts of muscle, which also means that you can eat more, you can enjoy your life more, you can have more fun, and you don't have to restrict to that daunting 15 to 1600 calories a day. This year I fell back in love with weightlifting and strength training again. My body feels denser, harder, stronger, more powerful. I fell in love with going into the weight room and being able to sling around a hundred pound dumbbell. I feel energized and excited to actually go to the gym and cardio never did that for me. Cardio made me feel small. Cardio made me feel weak. Cardio made me miserable. If lifting weights isn't your thing, don't worry about it. Although I highly recommend that you at least get into a little bit of it or try a little bit of it out because as a woman, it's power move. But there are tons of different types of resistance training and you can even start with just body weight type of workouts. I would Google different types of resistance training to get started. But the main point of resistance training is that you're just challenging your muscles and stimulating muscle growth. I do recognize that cardio is good for you cardiovascularly though. Instead of high intensity state cardio I really fell in love with walking I fell in love with just moving my body being by myself walking in nature my body started to feel less stiff I was recovering more I was happier my mood was enhanced and it increases your overall energy and expenditure for the day so now I keep those high intensity interval workouts to a minimum and just focus on slow intentional movement Remember, your metabolism is so much more than what you eat and how you move. Your body is consistently performing thousands of chemical processes without breaks, addressing potential pathogens, creating new cells, destroying old cells, digesting, eliminating, repairing, and remineralizing. And we forget that our bodies ultimately have more responsibilities than just making us look skinny. How about we support that too? Your lymphatic system plays a huge role in your metabolism. And lately I've been focusing on drainage and helping to move my lymphatic system System along. Your lymphatic system includes a lot of organs like your skin, your lymph nodes, your colon, your liver, and it is the way that our body processes and eliminates toxins and waste. If your waste elimination is backed up, this is a telltale sign of a slow metabolism, and this can look anything like skin issues, feeling puffy, inflamed, and swollen a lot, not going to the bathroom one to two times a day, an inability to profusely sweat. Do you get sick easily? Do you have low energy? Have you noticed changes in your hair recently? If you answered yes to any or a lot of these, it's probably ample that we support our drainage pathways. Over the past year and a half, I've done a lot to support my drainage pathways and my favorite ways are going in the infrared sauna. If you don't have access to an infrared sauna, a normal dry heat type of sauna that you have at your gym works well too. I've been incorporating ice baths, cold plunges, walking, dancing, daily movement, and dry brushing. I've also been working on remineralizing my body by taking carbon minerals. My favorite brand is by Cellcor. And not limiting or restricting my body's need for carbohydrates coming from fruit, which is filled with a lot of minerals. Minerals are the raw material that your body needs to actually perform all of these chemical functions in your body. So making sure that you are remineralizing the body is really important, especially if you are working on moving the lymph. And then another couple of my favorite ways to work on moving your lymph are red light beds and red light therapy, coffee enemas, which we all know is one of my favorite tools of all time, and taking a gentle binder so you can package all of those pretty little toxins up with a bow on top and send them out. Okay, real raw moment in the middle of this semi-scripted fun video. I literally had to stop filming and stop recording this because I, I just broke down. I realized while I was recording this that I had gained 15 pounds. And yes, I've healed my metabolism. I'm really proud of that. And I just got so proud of what I've done. And also simultaneously, I felt a lot of pressure and a lot of shame 
for gaining 15 pounds. I felt like I was loved more and liked more when I was 15 pounds lighter. And I just had this moment that I'm so proud of myself for not shrinking. I'm so proud of myself for putting on the weight that I needed to put on and not giving into this societal pressure and the bullshit of needing to be 12% body fat in order to be loved. And I was looking at myself in the mirror and I was looking at my face and I was like, my face is fuller. You can tell that I've gained weight. My body's fuller. And then I was like, but your life is fuller. Your heart is fuller. You look full. You look full of life. That's what this is all about. And I just got really fucking choked up and proud of myself because I don't need to be skinny for other people to love me. I don't need to be skinnier for to love myself. Whew, real raw vulnerable moment. Now back to our regularly scheduled, scripted and beautifully put together video. <laughs> Lastly, on how I healed my metabolism, I leaned deeply into my life force. This past year and a half has been one of the hardest and challenging yet most rewarding years of my life. It was a time that I chose me, that I faced my fears, that I spoke up for myself, that I took risks and I followed my gut. I loved a lot, I lost a lot, I cried a lot, and there were a lot of moments that I thought I would never come out normal on the other side again. I thought that I would always hurt, that I would always be in pain, but I did. I did come out on the other side. And in fact, I think I came out even better. Before this past year, I was depressed and chronically stuck. I was also 20 pounds overweight and no matter what I did, it just wouldn't come off of my body. And the moment that I chose me and chose to follow my life force, chose to follow my passions, chose to reignite that fire that I have inside of my body was the moment that my body actually started to respond to all of the physical changes that I was making with my diet, with my lifestyle, with my fitness, with my nutrition. I wasn't responding until my body got the message from my brain that it was safe and that I was living my life for me. I was still exhausted and tired, yet this time I was hopeful. I was still struggling, but I was struggling doing things that I loved. And slowly but surely, my life got better, my life got brighter, and I felt on fire doing things that I was passionate about. Your metabolism starts in your brain, and if you lead a life that each day you're consistently having to talk yourself into liking or how just to survive another day, your body hears that, and it absorbs those thoughts, and it slows down just to protect you. Start rediscovering your purpose and your passions and what lights you up again. Take a risk, do something that really scares you. Get out of your comfort zone. Seriously, do anything, something that just makes you feel more you. Okay, so that's it. Those are all the steps that I've taken over the past year and a half to heal my metabolism. And I hope that this video inspires you to do something, to take a really small baby step or a big fucking leap. Just remember that you don't have to shrink anymore. You really deserve to shine. You deserve to take up space and you deserve to be you. Thanks for watching and I hope to hear about your experience with this in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.